G'day champions, I'm Jax, this is Aussie Tool Reviews, and today we're going to be having a look at the Suizan Folding Ryoba. This nifty little saw right here. Now, in an effort to be transparent with you guys, this tool was provided to me by the tool group. But I have not taken payment for this video, and I am in no way obligated to say anything. This review is my own opinion. With that out of the way, let's have a look at this insanely cool pocket knife. I say pocket knife because at the end of the day, it folds up just like a pocket knife. So the first thing I noticed about this saw when I checked it out was the packaging. It's got to be the nicest packaging I've ever come across on a brand new saw. Opening it up and pulling the saw right out, it comes with a little brochure in the packet which is going to run you through exactly how to use the saw if you never have and it'll also touch on all of Suizan's other products. Before we jump right into this, I just want to touch on what this saw is. This is a Japanese pull saw. For those who are not familiar, when you're cutting with this saw, it cuts on the pull stroke, as opposed to Western saws that cut on the push stroke. With this saw in particular, we're dealing with a 15 TPI blade that has both a cross cut side and a rip cut side. The blade itself is only 0.4 of a millimeter thick, which is 0.02 of an inch. That leaves us a kerf of 0.9 millimeters or 0.03 inches. This is why these saws have become so popular in fine woodworking. There is extremely little waste when you're using them. I mean, look at that. There's barely anything there. Overall, the blade on this folding Ryoba is 240 millimeters or 9.5 inches. Now I do have a handful of other Japanese saws, some that have traditional handles and some that have more modern handles. But as I said at the start, this has a folding handle. Now you're probably thinking, in an environment like the wood shop, what is the benefit of a folding handle? And to be honest, I didn't really see the benefit to begin with either. But since I started working in a job that requires me to take my tools on the road a lot more, I'm really seeing the benefit in having the blade protected. That is, providing of course, that you keep this little plastic sheath and don't throw it away, because that protects the outer blade. But with that in place and the blade closed, you can see that that blade is fully protected, it can be thrown in your car, it can be taken on site, it can leave the wood shop without getting damaged. And at full extension, this blade is very comfortable in the hand and it has a very similar size to a traditional handle. You may be sitting there thinking, mate, I'm not one for hand tools. And trust me, I get exactly where you're coming from. If I can do something with a power tool, chances are I'm likely to do it over using a hand tool. One thing about these Japanese saws though is because they cut on the pull stroke and they've got such a fine blade, they take a lot less power to perform the cut with when you compare them to the Western counterparts. These saws are actually very easy to use and they produce a very nice cut. I was recently doing some production turning in my shop because these YouTube videos don't quite pay the bills yet and I needed to cut up a lot of blanks. I started off using my bandsaw that you see here behind me. In the end, I resorted to this saw because it was just quicker and more efficient to use. By the time you turn the dust collection on, get your safety gear on, power the saw on, get everything prepped and ready, you get fences set so that you're making the cuts right, it's a lot of work. Whereas with this, I could just pull it out and it's ready to go. So let's go on a bit of a hunt for the toughest timber that I can find in my workshop and we'll see how this performs. I think Chewit should give this stuff a good run for its money. Now I haven't tried a rip cut with this blade yet, so I'm going to give that a go with you guys right now. Now I don't know what sort of results you're receiving off a handsaw, but that is insanely clean in my books. There's even a glisten off of that in the light reflection. How insane is that to come straight off the saw? 
I also want to touch on the handle of this saw because if I'm being completely honest, I've never found these traditional handles to be overly comfortable. Don't get me wrong, they do the job, they fit in your hand and they have a good grip on them. But I think I go for these handles mainly because they're aesthetically pleasing. They suit the theme of the saw and they look great in the background. And I shoot a lot of content so I need stuff in the background to be looking its best. But between these two saws, I find myself grabbing for this one a hell of a lot more than this one. The rubber grip feels a lot more secure and it holds in the hand a lot nicer. Enter the folding Ryoba. This takes the rubber grip to the next level. There is next to no weight obviously in the blade. Everything is in the handle. At first glance, the handle looked a bit boxy and I didn't think it would be that comfortable. But on closer inspection, you can see that all the corners are chamfered, which actually creates a very nice rounded grip feel. The handle's got a slight taper to it in the center there and the chamfers are also deeper, which creates the feeling of it being thinner in the center. Not only does this fit in the hand comfortably, but when you're cutting, if the saw does happen to catch and your hand slips, your grip hits a thicker part of the handle to stop it sliding off the end. Personally, between these two handles, there's no competition. I find this one to be a hell of a lot more practical and a lot more comfortable. Now, I'm not quite sure how to translate build quality to you guys through a video, apart from telling you that every part of this saw feels premium. The weight in the handle makes it feel expensive. The mechanism, when you open it, has a nice locking sound and the blade locks in. The release lever is solid and smooth. And if you wanna feel like you're in some sort of ninja movie, it flicks out quite nicely. Although I'm sure Suizan probably doesn't recommend opening it like that. So when it comes to build quality, I can't say that I've come across a Japanese pull saw that feels more premium than this Ryoba does. The weight of the handle, the operation of the folding mechanism, and the thin kerf on the blade is just tremendous. It feels like a good solid product. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now on some of Australia's hardest timber, and that blade is still razor sharp. And if you're someone who carts their tools around with them a lot to job sites and so forth, you can't beat this handsaw. When it's folded up, it comes in at just over 30 centimeters and just over eight centimeters. You're not gonna find a Western saw with a blade protector that's gonna take up less space than that. It gives an efficient, clean cut. And I tell you what, coming from someone who doesn't particularly like using hand tools, this is a pleasure to use. Now the tool group supplies to a number of popular retailers around Australia, and I will list them down in the description below. So if you wanna get your hands on one of these folding Ryoba saws, check the description, find your closest local retailer, and head on over and pick one up. This saw in a very short period of time has become my go-to hand saw. It's safe to say this folding Ryoba has the Jane tick of approval. If you're looking for a Japanese pull saw, I hope that this video was helpful to you. And if there's any tools that you particularly want reviewed on Aussie Tool Reviews, leave a comment down below and let me know. We've got the Aussie Tool Reviews uniform as well as a bunch of other merch that I have hand designed down in the description below. So check that out if you're interested in supporting the channel. Stay safe, look after yourself. Until next time, I will see you later.